Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a mystery thriller film, Psycho, Part 2. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film starts with a lady entering the bathroom and taking a nice shower. As she enjoys the water dropping on her nakedness, an intruder enters the room and pulls the shower curtain aside. The lady screams in fear and repeatedly yells, no. After plunging the knife into her countless times, the intruder walks away, leaving the poor lady only to die. The scene transitions to the court, where the judge releases Norman Bates from a mental institution after being pronounced of sound mind by his psychiatrist, Dr. Bill, after 22 years. A woman named Leela interrupts the hearing and protests by producing a petition that she has been circulating with signatures of 743 people against Norman's release, including the relatives of the seven people he murdered. The judge refuses to acknowledge her petition, so Leela vows to see Norman return to the institution to pay for his crimes. After the hearing, Dr. Bill takes Norman to his old home, the gloomy mansion on the hill behind the Bates Motel. They find the car parked by the motel owned by the current manager. Dr. Bill offers to introduce the manager, but Norman refuses as it can wait until later. As they walk up to the house, Norman sees someone in his mother's bedroom window. However, he dismisses it after Dr. Bill tells him there has not been a tenant in the house for years. As they reach the house, Dr. Bill offers to find another place for him to stay, but Norman insists on returning to his old home. Dr. Bill reminds him that the painful memories from the past are likely to occur, but Norman can certainly handle them now. Before leaving, Dr. Bill shares his disappointment about the budget cutbacks, forbidding a social worker to check in on Norman occasionally. Dr. Bill informs Norman that the telephone has been reconnected, and he's expected to report to work at noon for a prearranged job as a short-order cook and dishwasher at a diner. As Dr. Bill leaves, Norman takes his suitcase upstairs, where he picks up the receiver phone and hears a dial tone. He also sees a note under the phone from his mother, whose voice he suddenly hears from her bedroom. A memory from his childhood then plays in his mind, from when his mother threatened to kill him after he put poison in her tea. The door slowly opens, and then a hand suddenly falls to the floor before slamming shut. Norman accidentally lets go of his suitcase in shock, causing it to tumble down the stairs. Later that day, Norman arrives at the diner and introduces himself to an old woman named Emma, who works as a hostess, cashier, and waitress. Emma takes Norman to the kitchen at the back and introduces him to the owner. One of the waitresses, a young woman named Mary, catches his attention. Emma gives Norman an apron to start working, when Mary accidentally knocks a pie plate off the table, causing the diner owner to snap at her. Norman casually covers for Mary, saying he did it. The owner lets him off the hook and gets him started with some duties, including reading off orders. Later that night, as Norman leaves the diner, he hears Mary shouting at the payphone, arguing with her boyfriend. As the call ends, Norman asks her what happened, and Mary replies that she has been thrown out of her boyfriend's place and needs a temporary space to stay. So Norman offers to let her stay at the motel for free. As Norman and Mary walk away, a thunderstorm forms in the sky, but they manage to arrive at the motel just in time. Norman goes to the office, takes a key, and tells Mary to wait for him while he checks the linen in the room. Suddenly, the motel manager, Toomey, enters, startling Mary. Shortly after, Norman returns and tells Mary to wait in the house. As Mary leaves to wait in the house, Norman puts a handful of drug paraphernalia on the desk and confronts Toomey about it. It turns out, Toomey has turned the motel into a sleazy hookup location, making Norman fire him. As he returns to the house, Norman makes a sandwich for Mary, but refuses to hold a knife. However, Mary insists on cutting the sandwich in half, takes the knife from the drawer, and asks him to cut it for her. Norman reluctantly takes the knife, and his nervousness creeps Mary out. She initially decides against staying with him, but Norman convinces her to stay, saying that he's scared to be alone in the house after being institutionalized for so long. It turns out that at the age of 12, Norman poisoned his mother after she went crazy, and staying alone in the house brings him troubles. They both go upstairs, where Mary heads into Norman's mother's room, but Norman insists she sleeps in the other room. Norman is apprehensive about going into his mother's room, as that is where some of his troubles happened. They move on to the next room across the hall, where Norman fixes the bed before leaving Mary. Norman says goodnight and turns off the light. Mary jams the door shut from the inside. The following day, Norman is working when Mary comes in and informs Norman about some changes to her plan. Mary gets up early and goes into town to one of her friends, who offers her house for Mary to stay in. As they return to work, a drunken Toomey enters the diner and mockingly asks the owner about Norman's job performance before sitting down at the booth. Toomey starts harassing Mary, implying that she and Norman hooked up last night. While hearing Toomey's remarks, Norman cannot help but get angry, but he tries to maintain his composure. 
Norman grabs another order from the wheel, but finds a note from his mother, instructing him not to let Mary into the house again. Shocked by this, Norman accidentally bumps into the fryer, spraying the boiling oil onto the owner's arm. Finally enraged, Norman confronts Toomey. Still drunk, Toomey picks a fight with Norman in front of the customers, and taunts Norman to pick up the knife and attack him. However, Norman silently returns to the kitchen while the owner deals with Toomey. After that, the owner returns to the kitchen and asks Norman what happened. Norman tells him about the note, but it has suddenly disappeared. Norman returns to his home. Later that night, Mary returns and tells him that she has reconsidered staying with him. Mary shares how she was impressed with Norman handling Toomey's behavior before going upstairs and taking a shower. Unbeknownst to her, someone looks at her through the small peephole cut into the wall. As she finishes her shower, Mary feels like she's being watched, so she goes downstairs and finds Norman playing the piano. Mary dismisses the feeling and returns to her room. A loud car horn blaring from outside startles Norman. He checks it through the window and finds a drunken Toomey, who yells that he's moving out before entering the cabin. The telephone suddenly rings. Upon answering, Norman becomes enraged as the caller, whom he presumes is Toomey, is calling and is pretending to be his dead mother. Meanwhile, a figure in a black dress enters the office and murders Toomey by inflicting wounds with a knife. The murder goes unnoticed as the murderer spends the night in the motel parlor cleaning the evidence of the crime. The following day, Dr. Bill pays Norman a visit, asking him about quitting his job. Norman tells him that he has dedicated himself to fixing up the motel to make it a legitimate business. Meanwhile, a flicker of light reflects on the bathroom mirror as Mary puts on her makeup. She discovers the small people. Creeped out by that, Mary runs out of the house. She casually introduces herself to Dr. Bill and shares her connection with Norman. Dr. Bill later reports to the sheriff about Norman receiving prank phone calls claiming to be his mother. It turns out, Norman has shared this information with Dr. Bill, who wants to put a wiretap on Norman's phone. However, the sheriff refuses as there are no grounds for that, nor has any evidence of a crime being committed. Before leaving, Dr. Bill asks the sheriff to check Mary's background. Later that day, while painting the motel walls, Norman begins to doubt his sanity when he sees a figure standing by his mother's bedroom window. He rushes inside, straight to his mother's room, only to find it looking exactly like 22 years ago and another note on the drawer table. Suddenly, he hears a sound coming from the attic. When Norman checks it out, the door suddenly slams shut behind him, locking him by an unseen person. While up there, two smelly teenagers sneak into the basement to hook up. As the teenagers do their smelly workout, a figure in a black dress appears and stabs the boy to death while the smelly girl escapes. In the meantime, Mary finds Norman sleeping in the attic with the door unlocked. This bothers Norman as he thinks it's the same person pretending to be his mother. He rushes into his mother's room, only to find everything covered with sheets, while the note is nowhere to be found. Mary takes Norman downstairs as they hear knocks on the door. It turns out, the teenage girl has reported what happened. The sheriff and his deputy question Mary and Norman, who tries to hide their tension about the alleged murder in the fruit cellar. The sheriff investigates the said place and finds it suspiciously neat and orderly. This confuses Norman as he has never been down the basement since he moved in. But then, Mary suddenly interjects. She claims that she has cleaned the fruit cellar and makes herself Norman's alibi, saying she was with him all afternoon. As they leave, Norman asks Mary why she has lied to the police, to which she replies that she had to do something as they were going to arrest him. As he returns to the police station, Leela tells the sheriff to check the swamp, as it was where Norman dumped his victims before he was arrested and institutionalized. Later that day, while looking for liquor at the cabin, Mary is startled to see her mother, Leela. Leela asks Mary about the alibi, and it turns out she was the one that lured and trapped Norman in the attic. That's why Norman could not have possibly murdered the teenage boy. However, Leela doesn't care about that. She just wants Norman to be reinstitutionalized, as Norman murdered her sister Marion from the first episode. Nonetheless, Mary doesn't want to forego their plan anymore, as she sees the good man in Norman, trying his best to do the right thing. Mary returns to the house, only horrified like Norman after seeing a bloody rag stuffed down the toilet. This causes Norman to be despondent, convinced that his blackouts are recurring and that he is responsible for the teenage boy's death and the bloody rag. Mary cleans up the bloody mess, while Norman leaves as he tries his best not to let his mind play with him. Shortly after, Mary experiences the feeling of being washed again, and she's right. The person behind the peephole quickly runs away after Mary discovers it. She calls out to Norman, who's downstairs and out of reach, implying that it cannot be him. Mary takes her gun out of the drawer before checking the house. She starts with Norman's mother's room. There Mary finds the peephole opposite the shower. 
Norman rushes into the room after hearing Mary's screams, who's freaked out after seeing a person's eye looking into her through the hole. Mary tells Norman that there's some peeping Tom peeping at her sexy body. Norman quickly helps her to check the house. As Norman goes downstairs, Mary calls the hotel her mother is staying at, only to be informed that Leela has not returned. Meanwhile, Norman hears his mother calling out, prompting him to rush to Mary's side and lock the door behind him. Mary wants to go downstairs, as it could have been the peeping Tom, who's messing with Norman's mind. However, Norman doesn't want to risk it, and insists they stay in the room until dawn. And so, Norman spends the night beside Mary for the first time. The following day, while Mary goes to town, Dr. Bill pays Norman a visit and informs him about Mary's true identity. Dr. Bill tells him that Mary and her mother Leela are responsible for the notes and the phone calls. They're also the ones dressing up like his mother to mess with Norman. On the other side, Mary confronts her mother about what happened and firmly tells Leela that she will not hurt Norman anymore. Mary snaps at her mother and warns her never to return to the house again. Meanwhile, Dr. Bill orders to exhume Norman's mother's body to prove to Norman that she can't be the one haunting him every night. Norman later returns to the house and confronts Mary about her connection with Leela. Just then, the phone rings and Norman angrily answers it right away, thinking it's Leela. Suddenly, Norman's tone changes and he apologizes to his mother on the phone, enraging Mary. She takes the phone from Norman and confronts Leela, but there's nobody on the line. Norman drops the call when Mary goes upstairs, takes the telephone there, and pretends to be his mother. As she returns, Norman tells Mary that he's certain it is his real mother torturing him. Their conversation gets interrupted when the sheriff sends his man to fetch Norman and take him to the swamp. Mary comes along as she's intrigued about what it's about. It turns out they are conducting a search at the swamp, and one of the things they find is Toomey's luggage. Norman tells the sheriff that he has never seen Toomey again after he disrupted Norman's night. The sheriff tells Norman to leave, but orders Mary to stay. Mary asks the sheriff if there's a chance Norman was adopted. The sheriff replies that he has no knowledge regarding that and calls Mary by her last name, Loomis. The sheriff questions Mary if they have any connection with the search, but she denies the accusation. Suddenly, one of the searchers finds a car dumped into the water. On the other hand, Dr. Bill follows an oblivious Leela, who sneaks into the cellar and removes the mother costume from under a loose stone. However, a figure in a black dress appears behind her and butchers the knife through her mouth, killing her. Dr. Bill follows Leela into the cellar, but no one is in sight, implying that the figure in a black dress may have hidden Leela's body before slipping away. Norman then enters the cellar and is surprised to see Dr. Bill, who explains that he followed Leela into the room. However, Norman seems oddly disinterested, as he's convinced that it is not Leela, Mary, or his dead mother haunting him. Meanwhile, the police pull Toomey's car out of the swamp and find his body in the trunk. After hearing the sheriff talking to his men about bringing back Norman, Mary rushes back into the house and orders Norman to pack his stuff and escape with her. However, Norman knows that they will eventually be caught. Just then, the phone rings and Norman answers to speak to his mother, but it's actually Dr. Bill calling from the motel parlor. He tells Norman that Leela has been contacting him through the motel parlor phone. However, Norman still calls him mother, so Dr. Bill hangs up just before Mary takes it. Norman takes the phone back and continues to speak, until Mary becomes terrified after hearing Norman refusing to do his mother's order to kill Mary. Terrified, Mary runs to the cellar and dresses up as Norman's mother before returning upstairs to confront Norman. Things begin to rapidly spiral out of control. Norman refuses to acknowledge Mary standing in front of him, so Mary goes upstairs to the extension phone and tries to talk Norman into hanging up. However, she realizes that Norman has gone entirely insane again due to the events manipulated by her and her mother. Suddenly, someone grabs Mary from behind. As a reflex, Mary stabs it. However, she's shocked to see Dr. Bill, who has returned to the house to expose Norman's tormentors. Mary runs downstairs and is confronted by a now deranged Norman, who swears to cover up for his mother's crime. In frantic, Mary repeatedly tells Norman that she is not his mother. Norman tries to reach for the knife when Mary grabs it and stabs him in the chest. Norman backs Mary down to the basement as she repeatedly stabs his hands. Weakened by blood loss, Norman stumbles on a pile of coal, knocking it loose and revealing Layla's body. After seeing her mother's dead body, Mary becomes distraught and attacks Norman when the police suddenly arrive and shoot her in the head. Norman is taken to the police station. There, the sheriff puts together a fairly inaccurate account of what happened, identifying Mary as the murderer of the teenage boy, Toomey, and maybe even her own mother, Leela. Meanwhile, Norman goes along with this story despite knowing the truth. Norman later returns to the house. While enjoying his sandwich, a woman walks up the steps. 
Norman answers the door and sees Emma from the diner standing. Norman invites her in and makes her a cup of poisoned tea before asking Emma if she really is his mother. Emma confesses to Norman that she is indeed his biological mother. The mother he grew up with is Emma's sister. She reveals that she was institutionalized as well, and she's also the one who's been killing anybody that would make trouble for her son. This means that Emma is the black figure in dress all along. As Emma sips her tea, she begins to gag. Suddenly, Norman kills her with a blow to the head. Norman picks up her body and carries her upstairs to his mother's room. Norman hallucinates the familiar voice of his mother, warning him not to mess with filthy girls again. The film ends with Norman reopening the Bates Motel and standing in front of the house, waiting for another victim to lure in and murder, implying that Norman has regressed and is insane again. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.